trail was hard, but it was wonderful. So writes Ruth Stoll in her book, Sand and Stars, as she describes the trek that she, her husband Ross, and their five-month-old boy made through the jungles of Peru in the 1930s. As they journeyed to reach the, quote, red-skinned forest people to whom we felt called to carry the gospel, unquote. Hello and welcome back to ClydeGospelHall.org. We are here that you may know that eternal life that is in the Son of God, the risen Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Steve McMurray and I am a co-pastor and an elder at the Clyde Gospel Hall in Clyde, Ohio. We're glad that you're here. In the 1980s, their travel was a combination of train, mule, and canoe. They crossed swaying bridges made of tree trunks, cable, and vine up steep mountain sides of the Andes on sure-footed mules before they reached the river highway that would take them to their new home in the forest. She writes, I would watch the foot of that mule ahead, the mule that carried the two most precious to me in all of the world, my husband and our small son, as it would slip over the edge of the cliff, breaking away a piece of the edge that would go down and down and my heart go down and down with it. It was what could happen to that mule ahead that put a tightness around my heart and drew the muscles of my throat and face until they hurt. I could voluntarily relax, only to find in a little while that same tension. She described one Sunday morning when the way seemed too hard, quote, the heights too high and the depths too deep, unquote. Just then, with tears in her eyes, she saw a cloud of brilliantly colored songbirds flying out of the canyon beneath them. And she was reminded that the Lord declared that each of us is worth more than many of such creatures. Her heart was at rest with this confidence. Perhaps this is a morning like that to many of us. The way before us seems too hard, the depths are too deep. Although we don't face the obstacles of a treacherous mountain trail, and comparatively there is no poverty of convenience with us, we nevertheless may face a trial that is very intimidating. Our trails are trials. Faith is tested at every turn and by every prospect of the unknown that lay before us. From where can we draw the confidence to keep going? Is it not from the same Lord, the same promises that Ruth Stoll and her husband Ross drew theirs? Sometimes we sing, midst the darkness, toil, and sorrow, one bright gleam I see. Well, I know the blessed morrow, Christ will come for me. Often these are just words in a hymn book, but sometimes they are the longing melody of our heart. Ruth writes of their inability to make the government post that they were trying to reach before nightfall. They continued on in darkness, unable to see the trail, unable to converse, relying only on these creatures guided by familiarity with the trail, and by their own familiarity with their God. Ruth writes, attempting to direct the mules was useless, They knew better than we where the edge of the trail was. We made no attempt to guide them. Conversation was impossible, but my husband riding ahead called back to me through the blackness over his shoulder a long chain of precious promises, scripture verses, inspired statements from Holy Writ. It was so dark I could not see the great white ears of the mule I was riding, but I could see the perfect safety of the one who trusts in God. Perhaps you are in the middle of a dark path. A path that does not allow conversational prayer with God, but only groans of discontent and worry. It is often the result of such dark times that enable us to see with greater clarity the beauty of God's promises for us. What was it that made this hard trail so wonderful for Ross and Ruth? They began to see things that they would otherwise never see or even imagine. She writes of what they observed in their daylight hours. Huge, clear blue butterflies darted before us in the sunshine. Lavish beauty, creation unspoiled by the trample of the race. Rounding the cliff, we saw the mountain wall beyond the river, like a huge tapestry hung from heaven's balcony, patterned with scarlet, orange, and purple against green. We worshipped the artist who alone could make such design. In silent wonder, we adored the God of creation. Now most of us are familiar with the following age-old philosophical question. If a tree falls in the forest and there is no one around to witness it, does it make a sound? Such a question encourages us to think of man as the center of creation. It leads us to consider that we are the creator of our own reality. 
Yet God's word reveals to us that creation was made by and for another, Colossians 1 and 16. We are an important part of that creation to be sure, but we are only a part of his beautiful tapestry. Still, our merciful creator delights to reveal to us, who were created in his image, the bountiful beauties of what he has done. The trail may be hard for us, but the things of God that we would otherwise never see are too wonderful to miss. Psalm 91 is a messianic psalm, meaning that it foretells the experience of Messiah when he comes. In it, the psalmist describes deliverance of God's Holy One, who has set his love upon his Father. In verse 15, we read, He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. This is not a describing a deliverance from the trial, but a deliverance through the trial. As it is true of Christ, it is true of all of us who are in Christ. We can claim this same promise of deliverance. Years later, Ross and Ruth Stoll would experience God's miraculous preservation out of the jungle after her appendix burst. Through many prayer-filled trials of transportation, through rivers infested with dangerous creatures and whirlpools, and through air and rail transport interrupted by a civil war. She miraculously survived until she was finally flown out to a hospital for treatment. Viewing that same rugged trail from 6,000 feet, she remembered its awful height and depth. Quote, when it seemed to me that I couldn't live out another hour of it, but now we looked at it from the clouds, and that trail looked like a silver ribbon in a sea of green treetops, so smooth, so short, so quickly and so easily passed over, unquote. One of these days, Christians are going to be caught up in the clouds with the Lord, and I'm sure as we look back from that glorified cloud, Earth's trail won't look so hard. We're going to be glad if we were true to the trail. So let us be true to the Lord of the trail. Thank you again for visiting ClydeGospelHall.org. May God grant you his peace in the knowledge of him who loved you. Thank you.